What's up, bro? Welcome back to the classroom. My name is Denmo, and I used to be addicted to video games. This used to be me. <laughs> Just like hunched over the keyboard, like <laughs> For me, it started in high school. When I was a kid, I didn't get access to video games because my mom was a teacher. So she had students in her class that had very bad grades, mostly because of the fact that they played video games all the time. So she taught me from a young age that video games are gonna melt my brain. So all my buddies, they would have video games, but I wouldn't, and it kind of sucked. So that's why I would play games that were online, like, you know, Have a Hotel, Maple Story, shit like that. But even then, I didn't really enjoy them that much. But I do remember, at some point, my friends were playing Call of Duty all the time. And if I couldn't play Call of Duty with them, I was basically an outcast. We would go to school, and then as soon as we'd get home from school, it would be Call of Duty. So at that point... I had no other choice but to get an Xbox because otherwise I would have been completely isolated from my friends, okay? So every day after school, we'd play Call of Duty, like Nuketown, if you guys remember that map, super awesome. Uh, Skyrim, when that came out, that was awesome. Even though it wasn't live at the time, we would still be in like group chats talking to each other. And then I think GTA 5 is the last video game I actually played. So I haven't played a video game in years and I'm aware that they're super good they're like super fun and they've gotten so much better since I've last played them. But that is exactly why I avoid them. And at the same time, that's why I'm so successful in other things because all of the thousands of hours I could have put in the video games, instead I put into my social skills. I put into writing, I put into public speaking, entrepreneurship. I now run a business, I make a decent amount of money. My job is literally just to talk to the camera about what I'm interested in and monetize that. So I'm in a very good position. And I'm not saying this because I want you guys to be like, oh, Denmo, you're so cool. Obviously, I am the coolest professor ever. Drop me a comment down below, coolest professor ever. But I used to be like you. I used to be addicted to video games, and I used to really enjoy them. And it took me to the point of quitting video games, not playing them anymore, to look back and understand what I was stuck in while I was playing them. In this video, I'm going to explain the main seven reasons that, as men in particular, we become addicted to video games. And in the past, if you've seen some of my videos before, I've tended to be very harsh on guys that play video games. I like to make jokes about them. I like to insult you guys. And I just want to apologize for absolutely nothing because you guys do deserve to be made fun of. Just like when I played video games, me and all my friends would make fun of each other on Xbox. Like guys, some of the most ruthless, cruel, mean things that have ever been said were on Xbox Live, okay? Anybody that's played that knows. So. I'm always surprised when people are like, you know, oh, why are you, you know, being so hard on us for playing video games? It's normal. It's like, guys, that's what video games are. You and your buddies making fun of each other, right? But with that being said, I've kind of dialed down what exactly causes us to be addicted to video games. And the reason this is important is two reasons. Number one, if you're able to understand why you are addicted to the video game, it's easier for you to break that addiction. So you can replace this bad habit with a good habit, with a healthy habit. Or if you play video games, let's say four hours a day, I can get you down to one hour a day, maybe two hours a day, and then slowly wean you off. I also don't want you to feel ashamed of yourself for playing video games. I want you to realize it's normal. And one of the reasons that the majority of young men are single is because they don't have time to go and meet girls because they're playing video games all the time, okay? And the other thing that's very important is I want you to realize that all of the hours that you spend playing video games don't actually level you up in real life. They only level you up in the game. And that's one of the traps of the game. And we're going to get to that later. But you're not actually providing value to anybody else in society. You're not making yourself any money. You're not working on your social skills. In fact, you're actually destroying your health because you're hunched over in a chair usually. Like I remember my posture was fucked because I was just hunched over at a keyboard all day. You know, that's going to cause back pain as you get older. In some cases, it causes like scoliosis, neck injuries, like... There's so many bad things that happen, but you don't realize it because you're in the moment playing these video games and years are going to go by. And I want to ask you this. If you could go back in time and play less video games, would you? Because I definitely would. And I didn't even play that much. But I know that every time I was playing a video game, I could have been hanging out with friends. I could have been playing sports. I could have been making money. I could have been learning. I could have been reading a book. I could have been fucking girls. But instead, I was on Nuketown just poning noobs, all right? I was fucking throwing axes at dudes and kamikaze them. Or what, what is it in the game? What's it called? Snakes and Bones or something? It's a Call of Duty map where you can uh, end somebody's entire score 
if you hit them with a tomahawk. That's what I would do. I was a tomahawk guy. I was that dude that was just slicing dudes with the tomahawk all day and they would get so mad. They'd get so fucking mad because I'd pwn their ass so hard. Sticks and stones, that was it. It was crossbows with stickies and fucking tomahawks. I tomahawk everybody, dude. I was the tomahawk king. Anyways, I'm going to go over the seven reasons that you are probably addicted to video games. And I want you to also comment down below how old you are and then scroll down and see how many other people in the comment section are also the same age as you because you'd be surprised how many other people are in the exact same position as you. And it's going to make you feel less lonely, all right? So trust me, even if you don't comment your own age, go down. You're going to see all the people that are your age. You're going to be like, man, I'm not so messed up after all. Everybody else is in the same position as me too, okay? All right, let's jump into it. So the number one reason that video games are so addictive is because this is our group status. As men, as humans, we care a lot about what other people think about us and we want to be involved in something socially. So we need the approval of others. And if you don't play video games, you're the odd man out, bro. You are literally an outcast if you're not the one playing video games. A friend of mine, he has a younger brother and his younger brother is like 10 and his grades are shit. So his dad took away his gaming system. And all his buddies do is play Fortnite after school. So once they took away the gaming system, he could no longer play Fortnite with all his friends. And he had a complete anxiety attack because all his friends do is play Fortnite. So he literally had nothing to do after school that involved his friends. So he felt completely isolated from the group. And his friends started treating him differently because they would just talk about how fun Fortnite is and all the shit they did after school. And he couldn't relate to that at all. And my friend's dad even thought, okay, what I can do is get all the dads together and then agree that all of them get rid of their Xboxes at the same time. But that's just not realistic. So I understand what it's like when you're in school and you're the one guy that doesn't play video games, especially if you're like me and that's what your friends would do after school every day. So in order for you to feel like you are at the same level as everybody else, like you are included, and most importantly, not feel like you're alone or the odd man out, video games is a necessity, especially in high school. And once you get out of high school and you have all these opportunities to get a new job, travel, find friends in real life, then you don't have to play video games anymore. And that's pretty much the last time I played video games. I think I was like 19 maybe. I played a little bit of GTA just for old time's sake when I was in college, but I just don't play this because I like doing other stuff. But at the time, that's the only choice I had. That's the only way I had friends. So this is the number one reason. You need to get respect from other men in the group. And if you are the one guy that's not playing video games, then you're going to be alone. So that's why it's important that you make friends outside of video games. When you get out of high school, you need to go and meet guys in real life. It's easy to be friends with the people that you grew up next to or they're in your class or whatever, but you guys don't necessarily have anything in common. Whereas let's say you like to hike. Instead of trying to get your friends that play video games to hike, you should just go meet other guys that already enjoy hiking. The friends you make based on the activities you do that are not video games. But the reason I'm saying this is because it's actually more important for us to not feel alone than it is to do something productive, okay? That's why most people don't start businesses because they hate the loneliness. They work a job they don't like, but it makes them feel good because they have other people around them, all right? So that's the number one reason. Now, the number two reason that young men are addicted to video games is because they're fucking awesome. Let's be honest, dude. Video games are dope. They completely stimulate our brains in all the best ways. The graphics are insane. The colors are insane. You don't actually have to go around the streets running people over with your car. But in GTA, it's part of the game, okay? I used to love, I'd see a crowd of people, I'd be driving, I'd be like, whoa, take them all out, you know? I'm just kidding, guys. I'm not a psychopath, but these games are fun. The funnest thing you could do in GTA was get five stars from the police. Basically, you just cause a bunch of havoc, and then all of a sudden, the police are chasing you, helicopters. So you drive all around the map. You'd be like out decking the cops. You'd be going driving around mountains. You'd have like the most souped up vehicles. I would use Franklin so my character would be in slow mo, and I would like just bend around corners. It was an adrenaline rush, bro. That's why those video games are so fun. We get to do all the things we don't do in real life, okay? Fucking fighting monsters, robbing banks, running from the police. It's just super exciting. Your heart's beating out of your chest, right? And then eventually in GTA 5, the only way to escape is you jump onto the moving train and then you hide there until you go through a mountain and you lose your five stars, okay? So that is just one of the many examples of it being crazy. I remember when, um, I think it was Battlefield, 
where you're dropped and there's like a hundred people playing the game at once. At the time, I'd only ever played like Halo where you could have like 30 people play. So Battlefield, there's like a hundred dudes playing. Oh my God, it was insane. Like just thinking about it gets me excited. They're so damn fun and you can do so much exciting stuff in them. But again, that is a trap because you're doing it behind a screen, all right? And these games are designed to hook you. But I'm not gonna beat around the bush and pretend like it's not awesome, okay? I see the same thing all the time with other content creators where they say, oh, you don't need to have sex. Sex is bad, like who cares? And it's like, no, sex feels amazing. Just like video games feel amazing, all right? So it's supposed to feel good. It wires you, it gives you dopamine, adrenaline, endorphins, serotonin. It's, it feels amazing, okay? And that's why it's so dangerous, all right? Same thing with porn. Porn is just super stimulating, okay? The next reason these are so addictive is because of the competitive aspect. Like I said, I used to fucking tomahawk the shit out of dudes. I would pwn these noobs. And being dominant at something feels super good. When you're like kicking somebody's ass in a video game, you keep killing them, they keep respawning, and you keep winning over and over, and then you start talking shit to them on the mic, like, oh, you fucking pussy, come get some, you know? Oh man, it feels good. I'm just thinking it back when I was pwning noobs. Also, like capture the flag in Halo, I remember a couple times I would tie the game or win and clutch it with like three seconds left to go. I'd jump out of a banshee and then fucking slam on my base and it'd be like, red team wins. And I'd be like, whoa, you know, it's just, it's awesome. It feels dominating. And as a man, it feels good to dominate someone, especially if you can do it in a safe environment like a video game. I'm not saying you should go and beat the shit out of people, but like, do you remember in high school or middle school when there'd be that one kid and he'd bully everybody and you just wish that you could fuck him up? That's what you can do in video games. You could be the scrawniest, pussiest little nerd bitch, but you can beat a bunch of fully grown men and be like, yeah, guys, go fuck your mom because you beat them in the game. And there's something powerful about that. You see, little people shine at this. This is the same feeling that social justice warriors get. This is the same feeling haters in the comment section get because they're a loser and they spend way too much time in the comment section talking shit. But in that comment section, look at them. That's who they think they are. You ever see a hate comment? This is this guy. He's like, yes, I'm the best, man. Hell yeah. Look at all these noobs I'm poning. In his mind, in the hater's mind, that's me. I just got owned. Congrats, bro. You left a comment. Nobody gives a fuck. All right. In fact, you made me money. Same thing with these people on Reddit. They complain and complain and complain. Instagram, like... I'm just saying guys, you know, I'm not trying to bash you. Look, I've left some hate comments when I was a teenager too, but like, it's the same thing that we criticize, you know, cancel culture. Oh, you guys are complaining, wah, 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 wah. This is the feeling they get when they complain. When they actually cancel somebody, when they talk shit on you, when they spread lies about you, this is how they feel, okay? It's the same feeling that you get when you're tomahawking dudes in Call of Duty, all right? So it's a totally normal feeling. There's a great quote my professor once told me. He's like, when you get good at something, it's fun. And when something is fun, you get good at it. That's why it's like a way for men to be competitive and do it in a controlled environment. Here's the other thing too. You can always rage quit. In real life, you can't rage quit. You get fired, you get humiliated, embarrassed in front of everybody. If you're getting absolutely pwned in a game, you could just be like, oh man, my, my fucking lag, dude. Lag, my connection's shitty, fuck your dad. You just rage quit the game, you know, sign out of the account so you don't mess up your KDR. Like, you have escapes, okay? Now, the next reason that men are so addicted to video games is because you can level the fuck up. And in the game, they have it set, so like, each level's a little bit harder. It's kind of like life, right? I remember when I first got my driver's license, I was like 16, okay? I had to do this thing called my G1, where you go in and you like, that's that street sign, that means stop, that means go, you know, bullshit like that. And then after that, I got my G2, I did my driver's test, and then I was allowed to drive with my parents in the car or like, you know, guests, other people around. And then after that, I got my G, where I could just drive and do whatever the fuck I want. Now, I don't take for granted at all how I can just go and hop in any car around the world and drive whenever I want to. But when I was 16 and I fucking got my G1 and I could drive with a parent in the car, that was the coolest thing ever, right? When I got to borrow the car a couple hours per week to drive around and do shit when I was like 17, oh my God. When I got my first car that I bought myself and drove to my job, oh man, I felt like the fucking man. The point is, it's leveling up. And the first time you do it, it's great. Now I could care less about driving, you know? I don't mind it, but like, I've already leveled up, so it's, it's, it is what it is. 
But the point is, in video games, it's the same feeling. You start to unlock weapons, you start to get spears, fucking crossbows. I remember in MapleStory, a game I played when I was like 10, there was uh, a warrior class or a magician that you could be. Each time you leveled up, you got these things called skill points, and you could put them into whatever skill you want. And the more points you put into a skill, the better you got at it, the more damage you did to the monsters. So it was like, I was hooked because I'm like, man, I want to fuck these monsters up. I want to I wanna be able to like get more points. I want to be able to do it better, faster. I want to be able to get like better weapons, better, you know, items in the game. So like, as I was going through the game, it's designed to slowly unlock things for you. So it incentivizes you to push through those hard times. Life's like a video game too. The problem is we don't necessarily have the same ways to express ourselves that we do in games, okay? In ancient times, you could run around all day and throw fucking javelins, and as you got better at it, your skill points went into, you know, throwing them better, measuring the wind, you know, knowing how to get close to the animal, and then you spear the fucking thing to the point where, like, you can one-shot a pig or a warthog in the bush or whatever, right? We don't do that anymore. So now we do it virtually in video games. So one of the things I'm going to talk about later is that the main thing you need to work on is leveling up in real life real life skills and there's ways you can do that we'll talk about more but this is why games are so addictive because you are tricked into thinking you're making progress i used to remember playing video games and each time i was not playing video games all i thought about that day was video games like i'd be at work or school or whatever and i'm just thinking about okay as soon as i get home i have to train for two more hours and then my new character levels up and then once it levels up i get three more skill points and then that'll make it easier for me to like level up more you know, as you unlock skills, it gets more easy. And each level, it takes a little harder. Like Maple Story, I remember I got to like level 80 or something like that. And leveling up, it would take me like a week or two of playing every day. But like, I was so invested. I was so hooked up. Meanwhile, in real life, not only was I not leveling up, like I was stagnating, I was actually declining because my posture was shit, wasn't exercising, I was eating junk food. I wasn't socializing. I wasn't making any progress towards a career. I was literally melting my fucking dome. But in my mind, I thought I was leveling up. So that's part of the addiction as well. Now, the next reason, and this is when you know you're cooked, okay? You've already gone through these four. This is when we got some real fucking problems, bro. This is you. You're like, good googly moogly. Oh, I love fucking Fortnite. So this is when the brain starts to have a bunch of data on you and it starts to manipulate you. And here's what I mean. These games are designed to make money by you spending more time on them. Video games are a lot like YouTube. Here's how YouTube works. The algorithm somehow recommended this video to you. And the longer you watch, the longer you're on the platform, which means the more ads you watch, the more likelihood that you continue to watch more videos after this. So if you notice in the sidebar of recommended videos to watch next, the videos aren't the exact same as this, but they are videos that other people that watch this video are likely to watch after, AKA their videos related to this. The best explanation somebody gave me once is like, if you watch a video on how to cook a steak, once you click it, all the videos on the side are like, how to clean your pan after cooking a steak, how to clean your barbecue, how to make mashed potatoes, you know, how to cook a steak this style. It's not the same video that you watch, it's something similar. And the idea is, if they showed you the same video again, you're not gonna click it because you're like, oh, I already just watched that. So then you're gonna leave the platform and you're not gonna be watching it anymore. So the algorithm instead shows you stuff that makes sense to watch after this. And that's why people go down a YouTube rabbit hole where they click one video, next thing they know, they watch fucking 50 more videos, okay? Video games are the exact same thing. The algorithm is the exact same thing. They know what time of day you log in. They know what games you enjoy, what ones you don't, what modes you like. They show you all the guys that are at the same KDR as you. So for example, I remember in Call of Duty, I had a decent KDR, but then I'd play on a certain server where everybody would just fucking obliterate me and I got super mad and I literally wanted to stop playing the game. So what they would do is they'd put me into games where I was the one pwning the noobs, okay? So instead of being the nail, I got to be the hammer in the game. And they do this because they want you to keep playing because the more you play, the more stuff you buy. Back when I played video games, they didn't have upsells in the game. They just had like a disc, you put it in the system, that's it, you know? Now, dude, they have updates, fucking expansion packs. You can buy shit in the game. It's crazy. And they know this. So they know, like, it's the same thing with the Instagram algorithm. They know what you like. They know, they, they know your heart rate. If you have an iPhone, they actually know, like, what photos and videos make your heart beat out of your chest more. 
and they know what makes you feel good. So now they got you and they fucking cook you, bro. This is when they really change your brain. And now if you literally shape your daily activities around video games. And this is where the addiction starts. This is where guys are playing every single day, multiple hours per day. And as you can see, it rots your fucking brain because everything else significantly declines, all right? When you're leveling up here, sometimes you're at least stagnating, right? Now you're going down, you're getting cooked. This is a very dangerous spot to be in. And if that's you right now, please tell us about your addiction. What's the game? Let us know in the comment section down below, okay? The next reason it's super addictive, and this is where I fall prey, is the social aspect. Because it's undeniable that the main reason a lot of guys play video games is because they get to talk to other guys. You get to banter. You get to hang out with the boys, talk shit. Like I remember sometimes I'd play video games with my friends. I sucked at the game, especially Battlefield. I was trash. I would go like fucking two and five every single game. The respawn took so long. I think you had to wait like 45 seconds or something. And half the time you have to run for three minutes across the map just to get where the action was. So it wasn't like very stimulating reward wise. Like I wasn't doing good at the game. I wasn't leveling up. I wasn't dominating. But I was talking with my buddies the whole time. We were just talking shit. We'd be talking about school, how hot the certain chick looked that day at school. Like, oh, Marissa's ass was insane today, you know? Or like uh, movies we were going to watch. Because we would go on... Um, these live chats, right? We'd, we'd go on Xbox Live and then we'd watch movies together. We would go on like channel 48 at 9 p.m. because Dawn of the Dead was playing. And then we would like walk through it together. Same with Pulp Fiction. Like a lot of the reason I love film so much is because when I was like 15, me and my buddies would watch movies together via our Xboxes. So it provided like this social community and it's also a culture. It's like a way for you to share memes. It's a way for you to send updates on games. If there's like, oh, new GTA trailer just dropped. Like it's a whole social community. And that's why I've kind of over the years changed my perspective on it. Because a lot of people, they're healthy gamers. They play once a week for three hours. And they do that just to stay in contact with their buddies, you know. Or I remember during Schmobin, for example, when in Canada you weren't allowed to leave your house. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't go to work. So like everybody was stuck inside. I remember after two or three days... All my buddies on Instagram were like, yo guys, I downloaded Xbox Live again, let's go. And there's like a window of two or three weeks where everybody was ripping Xbox again. And there was something beautiful about that because of the social aspect. This actually has become the third place. The third place is a neutral area where men and women, but you know, particularly men, can go and talk. There's no status, there's nothing. So this is one of the main reasons that I think a lot of guys stay playing video games. It's so hard to leave. You got your friends there. The game feels good. Maybe you're not dominating. Maybe you're not leveling up. But this becomes like therapy, you know? You can go in, tell guys about your day at work. You can say some funny shit. Like in real life, nobody is as funny as they are on Xbox because you're kind of anonymous, right? Like I know a lot of guys that are really funny on here, but they definitely would not be able to be funny on stage, okay? I like to think sometimes I'm funny in my YouTube videos, but that's totally different than me going on stage and telling jokes. But a lot of us, if you can make people laugh on Xbox by saying some pretty degenerate shit, that makes you feel good. And it's totally normal. So like you have an audience here of your friends, sometimes other people in the server that like you can just talk about stuff with. And it's kind of cool. Now the problem is this actually ends up becoming an echo chamber because the same guys that go down this rabbit hole, they isolate themselves from others. So they start to, you know, become socially awkward. They stop exercising, their mental health kind of gets questionable, and they're super horny still. So instead of approaching girls in real life, they watch porn, they play video games. So now they are upset because they don't have any women in their life, right? Well, the reason they don't have women is because they're playing video games all day. They're not approaching girls. But again, you go into the server, everybody else is talking shit about women. Why? Because there's no women in there. Just like when women are together, they talk shit about men. So it's totally natural. I always thought that was ironic. Like people say, oh, video games... The guys in there are so misogynistic. It's like, yeah, women are misogynistic about men all the time too. They talk shit about dudes all the time. Just not on video games, right? That's why when girls play video games, there's a bunch of dudes being like, oh, I'll show us your tits. You know, it's like, yeah, you're going into the, the male space. It's like when men go into the women's space, similar shit happens. Anyways, the problem though is a lot of the people here, they're leveling up in the game because they're losers in real life. They're trying to dominate in the game and talk shit 
because they're dorks in real life and they don't have the actual confidence to do that. So this becomes the YouTube comment section. It becomes the biggest fucking dorks, nerds, and haters. And yes, incels that are not succeeding with women. So now, naturally, they're going to voice those frustrations to everybody else. And then it becomes an echo chamber of dudes talking shit about women, talking shit about other dudes, and basically just shitting all over society. And that's a very dangerous spot because now your entire status, your daily activity, your dopamine release is tied to an echo chamber of guys smelling their own farts, talking shit about women, talking shit about other successful dudes. Like even guys that don't play video games. Oh, this fucking guy I work with, he thinks he's so cool because he works out, but he doesn't play Call of Duty. What a fucking loser, bro. What a pussy. That, that's used to, how I used to think, right? But then I realized, no, I'm just hanging out with a bunch of losers. What a fucking video game. Okay, now here's the last reason that video games become addictive and this is actually in order. I'm curious guys, what stage are you on? Are you on one of these stages? Hopefully you're not here or hopefully you are so you're like, I'm ready to break this fucking habit, okay? The last stage is that you become depressed because you've isolated yourself, you don't talk to new people, you don't have new friends, you don't have the ability to make new friends, you're not making that much money, you're not exercising, you are only winning and dominating online. You are only leveling up online. So the only way that you feel like you're accomplishing shit is in video games. The algorithm knows this and they cooked you. They've gotten you to pay subscription fees. They've gotten you to download upsells and fucking new video games. You're entwined in the culture. So this is your third space now. So even if you don't want to play video games, you don't give a fuck, you still need to hang out with these guys. What are you going to do? Hey boys, let's meet up in real life. Let's go play hockey. No, it's not going to happen, dude. Otherwise, you would have met those guys. So that's the solution here. You need to replace these habits with real life ones. But anyways, now you get to a point where you're fucking depressed, but this is the only thing that works for you. You're like an addict. You need to get that, that little dopamine. You need to get that endorphin. You need to get the oxytocin from being around the friends. So now this is your escape from reality and it gets cooked into your schedule. You set up your life to be as convenient as possible. You wake up, don't fucking go to the gym, go straight to work, instantly monster white to the dome, work all day, job you hate, and you can't wait to get home so that you can log in and just sit idly in a Discord server. Just sit idly in the Xbox lounge, hoping there's somebody there to talk to you. And then what do you do? You play video games, why? Because you have nothing else to do, nothing better to do. And this becomes your routine now. The only way you feel good is if you have your video game therapy at the end of the day. And this was me for months, okay? Thankfully, I broke this habit. But I remember at a certain point, I was working full time. I had no new friend group, so I had to hang out with the same old guys. And each day, I got off work, didn't like it. I was depressed, I was tired, I'd be eating junk food. I'd be like, all right, well, let me just go online and play some Xbox and numb myself for a couple of hours. And that's the point where a lot of guys get to where they fucking break and they lose their shit. And hopefully, they find a Denmo video and they turn it all around. And that's why I made this video, man, because I was in the same position as you. And I know that most people on YouTube shit on video games. I do all the time, it's a punchline, all right? Today I'm taking it easy on you guys, all right? That's why I'm the best professor ever. Let me know in the comment section down below. Denmo invented video games. Denmo invented Xbox. Thank me for inventing everything you enjoy. Um, but anyways, what we need to do is break this because this schedule here needs to be replaced, all right? So how much room does daddy have on the board right here? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say this is your current situation, okay? Current, and what we wanna do is get you to your desired situation, right? So your desired situation, let's talk about some easy ones. You want a new job that you actually enjoy. You want a new job that pays you more. You don't have to enjoy it, but it gives you more financial freedom. You want to get some pussy. You want to fuck some hot girls with some big booty African Judy Jamunis, okay? And you want to get some puss, right? You want new friends so that you can go and do cool stuff. Maybe you're into hiking. Maybe you're playing guitar. Maybe you like reading books. Maybe you don't even know what you like because you've just been playing video games and your fucking brain is cooked for so long, all right? First of all, you need to believe in yourself and understand that, yes, you can do it. I did it. Many others have as well. Usually what happens is as you get more responsibilities in life, AKA a job, a girlfriend, social obligations, or a family, you don't have time to do this shit, all right? I have a bunch of buddies that used to play video games all the time. I'm like, 
bro, what are you doing? He's like, well, one day I'm going to be a dad and I'm not going to have time to play video games. So I'm just having fun right now. And it's like, dude, what kind of a fucking way to look at it is that? <laughs> like, I still make fun of him about that to this day. But your current situation is any of these. To get to your desired situation, first you need to replace these habits, okay? So your core group of friends, look, you can still be friends with them, but you need new friends that don't play video games. Join an MMA gym, join an improv class, go and cold approach dudes, go and ask your coworkers to hang out, go to a fucking sports game, anything but video games, okay? Find something that also makes your brain react like this. For me, martial arts was good, creating content, I love going out and pranking and socializing with people. I like recording videos. I loved running a business. Like me and my friend, we had a property management business. We were scrubbing toilets, cleaning up recycling bins. It was bullshit, but we liked it because it was our thing and we got paid doing it. So all of a sudden, I would be excited to wake up every morning and make sure all the blue bins were properly sorted. None of them were knocked over. There was no animals eating banana peels and shit. And that I got to those bins before the city inspector did so that he didn't fine us. That was a game. Me and my buddy would drive around looking for the city supervisor, being sure that they didn't fine us for because we had like dirt or garbage on the pavement, you know? We would make sure it was sorted so that the, uh, the city collectors would collect the garbage. Because sometimes uh, when we had this property business, we would have like five bins of fucking garbage and they would not take it. So then all these bins would stay there with all this garbage. And then the students in these houses we were managing they wouldn't do anything about it. So it would get knocked over by animals and then they would fine us hundreds of dollars. So it was like a game for us to stay on top of that shit. I actually wrote a comedy show about that. I'm working on it right now, getting that pitched. Anyways, um, find something that replaces it. Also, pussy, man. When you go and meet girls in real life, your heart's beating out of your chest. It's exciting, like they're cute, they're attractive. You make them laugh. You go on a date, you don't know what's gonna happen. All of a sudden she touches your cock. You're like, oh, oh, oh my God, this is awesome, right? Replace that, okay? There's some guys that play video games and they are successful dating too, but it's usually like total other end of the spectrum, all right? Now, the next is find a way to dominate people at something else. Look, it can be a fucking board game, okay? Catan. I dominate the fuck out of my friends in Catan. Sometimes I get destroyed in Catan, okay? I used to think board games were lame as fuck until I tried them and Catan's pretty awesome. I don't know about the rest. Another way you can dominate people is through sports, competition, Martial arts, it could be soccer, hockey, rugby, football, doesn't matter. But you need to find a way to compete with other men. And it doesn't mean you have to beat the shit out of them. Doesn't mean you have to like, you know, go like this. Don't be a bad sport because that's how you get fucked up. But like, this is the same thing that you enjoy about video games the most. You can do the same thing in real life. Another way you can do this is by leveling up in real life, okay? If you're a student in school, Read more books, study more, talk to your professor more. You're paying thousands a year tuition. You may as well go and meet with your professor. I used to go and talk to my professor all the time. This guy has 30 years of knowledge and I can just go and talk to him for free. It's like having my own personal mentor. It's amazing. And a lot of you aren't capitalizing on that, okay? Find ways to level up in real life. Go to the gym, progressive overload, be able to lift more weights, get better at guitar, get better at singing, writing, being a socializer, right? If you want to level up your social skills so that you're able to go and approach girls in real life, be confident, start a new friend group, you can join my paid community, Socializer School. I have hours of courses, tutorials, and weekly Q and A's where you can ask me questions each week that teaches you how to get girls and how to start a new friend group, okay? And I'm also developing a course on how to become a YouTuber. Right now, all I do is I think about things, I read books, I talk about my life experiences and things I'm interested in to a camera, and I make a full-time living. And people like me because of that. You know, what is a better job in the world? And I'm not special. I used to be a tradesman, okay? I used to be a forest firefighter. I used to kill chickens for a living. I used to scrub toilet bowls. Like, I've done it all. And this is way better. And the only thing that got me here is that I actually wanted it. So if you are in the trades and you're like, you know what? I don't take this guy seriously. He's just some fucking YouTuber. I used to be like you, but then I came out on the other side. So like, not to go off topic here, but you can do anything you want, but what's holding you back is usually your addiction to video games, man. If I played video games, I would not be a YouTuber. Let me tell you that. I wouldn't have had time, okay? So trade that for something better. I'm telling you, being a businessman, making money online, talking to a camera, way better than whatever the fuck else I would have done, okay? Now, the next thing to do is to realize that the algorithm is fucking you, so break the algorithm by deleting it, okay? Delete your Instagram, delete your Facebook, 
Put your phone and computer on grayscale, so no color on the screen, and that makes it less stimulating. That way, it doesn't look like a bunch of berries in the desolate bush. You know, like the reason these colors pop so much is because they're rare. How often do you see pink or red in real life? Like when you're in a forest, you don't see these colors. You see green and brown and gray. It looks like shit. And then you see a bush full of berries. You're like, whoa, you look like this guy. You're like, whoa, whoa holy shit. <laughs> same thing with video games, same thing with social media. So when you take color off, it makes everything gray. And then it looks like shit and you don't want to use it, which discourages you from using it as much. And then the algorithm doesn't have as much data. So they don't know what you'd like anymore. And then because of that, they can't manipulate you and make you fuck. Like, have you ever sat down to go on TikTok and then 45 minutes go by and you're like, what the fuck just happened? It's like you just disappeared. The algorithm, the monkey brain took hold of you, okay? They hooked you. It's like your brain's on cruise control. It went on autopilot. You sit down, you play fucking six hours of video games, went by like an hour. You're like, Whoa, what the fuck happened, okay? So you need to take control of that by not giving it as much information, which means not using it. The next is you need to find new friends, a new way to talk to others, all right? Now, at first, the easy transition is gonna be an online community. So I have a free online community. It's not my paid group. I have a paid group and then I have a free one. And the free one, there's 15,000 members. And within there, we talk about stuff, okay? So that way you have people you can talk to online. If you had a rough day at school, if your girlfriend just broke up with you, if you're having issues and you need other people to talk about it with, instead of going on fucking Xbox Live, you can join an online forum. You can join my free community in the description. Or you could make friends in real life, which is what I said here, right? Build a new social circle. If you can afford therapy, try that out. I actually have a whole video on alternates to therapy as well. For me, I like the martial arts gym because I get to do something I enjoy. I get to be competitive about it. And I also get to help other people with their issues because, you know, we're doing drills. We're holding pads for each other, right? We're like sparring. We're helping each other get better. And that also allows us to have conversations, okay? So again, you need to put yourself in a new environment where you can talk to others. This could be church, could be you hanging out with your coworkers. You could even join Alcoholics Anonymous or Video Games Anonymous if that's a thing in your city. I don't think so. I think uh, that'd be way too soft. I don't think <laughs> that's a good idea. But the next thing is to stop being so hard on yourself, man. Just give up this idea that you can go back in the past and change things because you can't. The only thing you can change is now. So like, instead of being hard on yourself for all the years you played video games, just accept it and be like, Okay, I fucked up, but whatever. What am I going to do? You know? Like a lot of guys, they have this sunken cost fallacy. They're like, well, I got to level 96. I may as well keep going to get to level 100. Or like, well, I've been playing this every day for years. If I gave up now, you know, I talked to a friend the other day and we were talking about screenwriting or something. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm too old to start that now. I've already learned a bunch of other stuff. You know, at this point it's too late. I'm like, dude, it's not too late. You could totally learn how to do this, right? But when you spent so many hours doing something, it's hard making that jump. That's why people rarely change careers, okay? I spent so many hours as a driller or as a landscaper in a chicken factory, forest firefighting. I had so many hours in that and now I do absolutely nothing similar to that, nothing even remotely close, okay? So I basically gave up years of my life, years of those hours where I got good at those things and I just gave up on that completely and now I make YouTube videos. Now I do acting, I do comedy, I do writing, okay? But at the time, this was very scary for me to make that leap because I was afraid, well, I already put so much time into this, I need to keep going with that. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be successful. Now you need to realize that because, you know, dude, I spent a lot of time wasted on video games. I spent years, all right? I probably would have had more friends in high school if I didn't play video games as much. I probably would have got more puss, probably would have been better at sports. like. I could go on and on and on about all the things I wish I did in the past. But the point is, it doesn't fucking matter, all right? We're here right now. So even though your whole life is video games right now, or whatever your habit is, you know, two hours a day, whatever, it's okay. You still can do new things. You can replace those with new things, okay? Each night, instead of going home to play video games, you can go to the gym. You can sign up for a martial arts class. You can walk around downtown, hang out with some friends. Call your existing friends, be like, hey guys, let's go out. Let's go fucking meet some girls or some shit, right? You can replace all that with new habits, okay? Your current can be replaced with your desired. Now, if you need help setting new goals, finding out what your strengths and weaknesses are, finding out what kind of people you wanna hang out with, finding out what your genuine skills and passions are and how to 
start learning something new and replacing these bad habits that video games have over your mind right now, I have a free community. It's called Socializers. If you go to the description, it's the free one, not the paid one. And in the free community, I have a free course, totally free guys. I just want to help you. It's called the Socializer Protocol. And within that, I have worksheets you could fill out. I literally have a timetable that's like strengths, weaknesses. I have a goal setting video. So it teaches you how to create goals, how to set them, how to follow up with them. I also have a daily habit tracker that you can print out, put on your wall. And then each day you check it off. Like, okay, workout, complete. Cold shower, complete. No video games, complete. Work for five hours, complete. So I actually have a system that turns your life into a video game. So if you're one of those guys that loves video games, the structure, the leveling up, the achievement, I created a free community that feels like you're playing video games. That way you can replace this bad habit with a good habit, okay? You can print out all of the things and when you check them off, you feel like a winner. You feel like you're leveling up. All the guys that don't have their habits taken care of, like they're not working out daily, they're not approaching girls, they're not making money, they're not doing any of this stuff, you are competitively dominating them because they're playing video games. They're leveling up online while you're leveling up in real life to yourself. And I have all these free resources, completely free, in the free community, in the description below. Because my whole thing is, if you stop playing video games, you're happy. If you're happy, you're productive. If you're productive, you provide value to others, you go and meet guys in real life, you make friends, then we can be friends, bro. Imagine if me and you and the boys could go fucking hunting, kill a bunch of animals in the bush, hike a mountain, do some competitive sports, or just talk some shit, go to like a comedy show together. Wouldn't that be so much better? than being in your room, hanging out in a fucking fart chamber with a bunch of other jabronis? Of course it would. Also, puss, okay? Puss is amazing too, all right? Ah, oh, you're gonna want that as well. So, free resources in the description below. As always, best professor ever. And what I want you to do right now is send this video to a friend of yours that is addicted to video games, okay? This is gonna be the wake-up call. And don't worry, when you send this to them, they're not gonna be mad at you. Like, oh, what the fuck, you saying I have a problem? No, they're gonna watch this. They're gonna be like, wow, that guy's really handsome. I might be gay. Look at that sexy stud. Oh, I like it when he does his voice deep like that. Yeah, Daddy Denmo. But after that, he's gonna be like, you know what, man, you're right. I gotta stop playing so many goddamn fucking video games, okay? No judgment here. We're all helping each other out, all right? Fist bump, and uh, yeah, best professor ever. I'll see you in the next one.